that was when we thought, you know, this is something that families should have. You know, it's just there's these cherished memories and taking old photographs and, you know, old we had an old home uh, movie, eight millimeter movie, things that we incorporated, and it just made for a great piece. So that was actually where Good Life Productions came from, and we started doing these videos for families, and then branched out into the corporate side as well, just because it was as far as a business model. Um, we just knew that it couldn't support just on the family business. But the family projects are great because you really get, you can get excited about them. You don't even know who the family is, but as you start to put the piece together, you know it has serious emotional impact. And you know, you like, like we always say, you know, we're not done until we make you cry. Because, and we're going to do it. We'll do it every time. Like, you can start to put the pieces together and people you don't know, you begin to become emotionally attached to because you just know that everybody has kind of the same story and and these things that we do today are going to be worth so much more in five years ten years twenty years down the line and you know we, we often tell our clients if they decide maybe not to go with us maybe you know the cost point doesn't work for them or something I always say to them well you should absolutely even if you don't hire us get a video camera and get you know get your family we also do biographies for people so where we'll interview someone or we'll interview you know all their loved ones or whatever people talking about them and what often happens is that we actually know more about the family than the family knows. Like you hear the stories from each sibling or you know from the from the wife or whatever and you really get to know these families and you start talking to them and you start referring to them by their first names as though you've known them all your life and and you know you know these kind of secrets that that maybe not everybody knows so it's it's really it's right. very um, it's very enjoyable for but us. But it is do. good life productions, not <laughs> real life productions. So, you know, we make well, it a, it's good. So, given that this is something that I'm interested in, I know a lot of our viewers are probably interested in how you got it started and, you know, was it a struggle for you and how did it, you know, grow into such a, I guess, lucrative, I'll say for you, <laughs> lucrative business? Thanks. Um, it, well, first of all, we, we luckily had some family support early on. Which was great. I mean, that that actually and that by helped. support we mean investment, <laughs> right? But that that definitely helped. Um, we didn't have to go to a bank. Um, the other thing was, my last job was in radio, and because they'd let me go, I got unemployment benefits, which actually is like the last grant in you know in this state. So that helped kind of allow us to begin to make the move. Because otherwise, it would be it would be very daunting. We had one camera, we had an editing system we didn't really understand. And we, but we slowly started just building it by buying just a couple of pieces of equipment at a time, a microphone, uh, you know, a tripod, a light set, a light setup. And a lot of it we actually had to finance through 0% interest credit cards, which thankfully, once again, it's just anywhere you're, where you can find a loan, anywhere you can do it. But I mean, the key is obviously with any kind of credit, you've got to manage it. I mean, you, you know, you do not want to go nuts, but you just want to like do little steps at a time. That was really the whole key. And we've been able to do, because I've been in broadcasting for a long time, Julia was in broadcasting, we knew a lot of people in, in Boston, and so word of mouth is how we've been able to, to yeah, get ourselves yeah, out. Yeah, we've had to do very little advertising, and that has actually saved us money, because you never know how that's going to work for you. But having the word of mouth, having the connections, I mean, it's truly... It, it, you learn that networking really does help. Yeah. This is where it really helps. Not what you know, it's who you know in a lot of places. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And as we got the business started, Neil was here working full time on it, learning the editing system. Kind of, he had studied production, but he was learning it, getting the, the you know learning curve. I still worked part time. So, and then eventually, once we had enough business, and it was a little, it was definitely a lot of juggling in the beginning. But once we had enough business, I jumped on board full-time and then it's just about slow growth. I mean for us it hasn't been a huge investment and hope that it all goes. It's really been taking our time and seeing how the market is and investing where and we, the, we the, could. The other point is that we've been lucky enough to be able to operate it out of our home. That's right. huge. Yeah. Which is which is key because it's one of those things where at times you're like I, I really like to go get a place you know I want to move out of here and, and we eventually will but you just look at how much it costs each month to rent a space and it's like you know what we can keep that money and actually either reinvest it in the in the business or keep it as profit. Right. Um, just to wrap up, do you want to let everybody know how they can you know see some of your work on your website? Absolutely, you can find Good Life Productions at www.goodlifeproductions.net. <laughs> Great smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us again, and we'll of course see you next time. Okay. Care of business. Woo! Care of business. Hello, 
Hello, everybody. We're here at the uh, annual Chamber of Commerce dinner, and look who I found. It's so, Michelle. Hi, everybody. It's so interesting to be on this side of the camera and microphone for a change. Wow, it's so good to see you again. I know. We miss you so much. I miss you guys at Talking Business. I really do, but you never know. Someday I might be back. Yay! So, Michelle is tonight's Master of Ceremonies, or I Mistress am. of Ceremonies. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, you know, I, I'm curious who is getting the award tonight, how it's going to go. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going to happen? Well, of course, you know, it's going to be perfect tonight because I'm the MC. Um, but aside from that, um, there are uh, quite a few award recipients tonight. Um, but the premier award that we give out is the John Fitzgerald Award, which we are pleased to be giving to Marshall Sloan uh, for all of his uh, efforts in the Somerville community. So we're thrilled with that. Um, and then some of the other award recipients that you're going to be talking to tonight um, can tell you a little bit about their business and their commitment to the chamber, but all of them in some way, shape, or form have made the chamber what we are today. Certainly hope that we'll see Michelle again fairly soon, but uh, for now, let's go scope out some winners. Taking care of business. Woo! Taking care of business. So we're here with Congressman Michael Capuano, fresh off of his win last night. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Mike, as you know, is the keynote speaker for this evening. So, uh, can you, are you excited to speak at this great event? It's packed here. You must be. Uh, it's going to be a great audience for you. Yeah, I was told it's a sold-out audience and uh, standing room only type of thing. So, I don't know. I hope I don't make a mess out of it. <laughs> well, everyone's already excited to hear from you, so I don't think you can screw up. Yeah. Or, <laughs> so obviously, uh, today's a big day for everybody in the Commonwealth and for you as well. Can you talk a little bit about the election and, and what that will mean for us going forward? Well, it was a great night last night. Uh, I, I, I believe it puts us in a position to really start working towards the things we've all talked about. Uh, up until now, it's been a struggle for the hearts and minds of America, if you want the truth, as to which way they wanted to go. They said yesterday they want to go in a direction that says the government can be a help and should be a help. And i I got to tell you, I wish that you know that President Obama was taking office tomorrow and we could get going. We have to wait till January, so we'll try to set the table between now and then. Do you think that, you know, Obama and, you know, bringing back the, the Democrats to office is going to have a, a big effect for all this that's here tonight? I certainly hope so. Every, everybody I know knows that the economy is the top issue. We all know that. Uh, it's not an easy issue. It's a very difficult one. I, I suspect that uh, Senator Obama will name the Secretary of Treasury amongst the first group that he goes at. Uh, if no other reason to set the set the tone to, to say that this is important. And uh, that person is going to have to get to work very, very fast. And, and we all know that. And uh, I, I, think, I think we'll be well served by it all. Thank you very much for Thank speaking you. with us tonight. Thank you. Taking care of business. Woo! And I'm here with the Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Marshall Sloan, founder and creator of Century Bank, my favorite bank, of course. Marshall, con Marshall, congratulations. How do you feel tonight? Well, I feel very, very proud and honored to get the JW uh, Fitzgerald Award. I know the Ames Envelope Company. It's been around a long, long time and with a very prestigious reputation. So it's very, very meaning meaningful to me uh, to be able to re receive that award. Uh, I'm kind of elated and uh, 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 and uh, I'm pleased to know that several of the people are, are here from uh, Ames tonight and uh, to uh, see me receive it. So, again, uh, I appreciate the honor. Uh, all, any success that I might have had because of the people of Somerville uh, who, who dealt with my dad uh, earlier in the furniture business and then with me. And that's what the success is all about, doing the right thing, being honorable and ethical, and that's where I got my moral compass. And. Uh, so I'm very, very pleased to be able to accept that award tonight. Congratulations. Here with the Honorable Mayor Joe Curatoni. How are you? Fine. How are you this evening? I am doing great. Celebrating November 4th, the day after. How about you? Uh, I'm very happy today. First, we have a great event here in the city of Summerville, a thriving Chamber of Commerce. We have a new president-elect, who I may say I supported, and uh, very excited about the future. Question one was defeated here in Massachusetts. So I think you should be proud if you're American. You should be excited. Uh, in any city and town in Massachusetts that question one went down and it's all about the future now and executing. No, absolutely. The turnout was just amazing, the voter, the, the involvement. Well, again, I have the distinct pleasure of being the mayor of one of the most diverse cities in the country. And, uh, you know, it's a diversity that really makes us exciting. And I'm talking about diversity in culture and race and income. I mean, everything about the city of Somerville uh, makes it a fantastic place to want to live, work, play raise your family here, so why couldn't you be happy and be the mayor in the city of Summer? I got the best job in the world. 